What you're looking at right now is the DJI Inspire 3. It's a cinema grade drone made to capture cinematic videos, just like the shoppers did. It's rocking an 8.1K full frame camera hanging down from its gut an FPV camera in the front, and multiple different camera sensors. The interchangeable lenses allows for a bunch of different perspectives to be captured during the 28 minutes of flight time that you get. Oh, and check out this badass controller. <laughs> Pretty sick, huh? Well, sit back, grab a glass of your favorite beverage, and get ready for liftoff. What I got in this box is something that is very, and I mean very, expensive. And I have no idea how to use it. Ooh. Oh, whoa. Okay. Oh, wow. Kind of baffles me how lightweight it is. I mean, like, sure, it's bigger than the Mavic, but whoa. Huh? Zenmuse 8K Air. Zenmuse DL lens. So like a compartment for all the four DL lenses. Oh, do you see how big this is? I have big hands, but my, wow. This is like an iPad mini. We have the FPV camera in the front. Let's see if it's the same connection like on the Ronin 40. <gasps> no. I have to see if this actually is the case though. Because I'm not entirely sure until we try it. Well. Ronin 40, Inspire 3. That's a bummer. I really do appreciate the fact that DJI is trying to come up with new things that can help us as creators. But I remember when I got the Ronin 40 and I was super hyped on being able to have that camera on the Inspire. I would love to hear your opinion on this. Not only is the camera not the same as the Ronin 40, but take a look at this because the thread for the batteries is not the same either. So that means that you can't use these batteries on the Inspire 3 and you can't use these batteries on the Ronin 40. Whatever happened to backward compatibility, right? Quick start guide. Press five times to raise the drone and then attach the camera. Smack. Need to use a little bit of force. Oi! <laughs> How cool is that? Okay. The red against red. Ooh. Steady. Ooh. Welcome. Okay. Aircraft control. Return to home. Power. Brake, side buttons, custom buttons, function, sport, and normal, customizing DJI Pilot, external battery, 4G network, that's sick. Go to DJI Pilot tool. Home point updated. Enter camera view. Oh, so that's the gimbal camera. You press this button, then you sort of like get the FPV camera instead. It's, it's much easier to see what the drone is doing. 8.1k? That is wild. I guess, uh, as they would say in a spy movie, this is way beyond my pay grade. Touch focus. Nice. As you can see up here, we have a lot of different parameters that we can adjust on the drone. Nice. Hello. Okay. We gotta take this out for a spin. Check this, this case though. It's very nice. Especially when you flip it together. Smack. Smack. A nice rolling case. <laughs> it's a little bit windy today. How do you think it's gonna go? I think it's going to go well. It's a big drone, so it's gonna be stable in the wind, but it's gonna go well. You guys remember Tommy, right? Head over to his channel, subscribe. He's a great dude. He's gonna go full force on YouTube now. He told me. The size of this is the size Oh, the Mini 3 Pro. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have controller A rocking right here. And then this is controller B. And uh, I'm gonna give this to you. Thank you, I'm Goose, <laughs> I'm the co-pilot. I'm Maverick. Oh, <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
очень грай. <laughs> we gotta figure things out. I thought that this would be exactly like flying a Mavic, but it's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> we have two controllers that none of us have used. There's also no ND filters on this. I understand it because of lightweight and size of the camera, but it would have been a good thing to have. Sending it up. Oh, nice. Off we go. Raising landing gear. Full speed ahead. Goose heaven control. I was like, I'm going to land now. This is a big size drone. It's going to go slow and steady. <laughs> How do you feel flying that? Scared. <laughs> it was really fun. But the weirdest thing was that when you're used to flying a regular drone, you see through the camera. But yeah. now you have an FPV camera and it's blowing outside. So it's like twisting and turning and you have no idea. I found it very hard to control the gimbal at the same time as you were flying. Did you feel the same? I felt exactly the same. I think you need to have a plan of what you're going to do yeah. to have it under control. I think that having a plan when flying a drone this size is definitely important because then you're going to be able to capture way better footage than what we just did. I don't know about you, but I think we need to dive a little bit deeper into this. Into the forest and a little bit of off-roading with the Toyota Yaris. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This, uh, this is a great car. Whoa. What I got here is the DJI RTK2. And if you're anything like me, then you probably didn't know what RTK stands for, but it stands for real-time kinematic. And if you compare this to regular navigation systems, then real-time kinematic is roughly 100 times more accurate. So that means that when using this unit together with an Inspire 3, you're gonna be able to do repeatable routes. So if you want to make sort of like a daytime to nighttime kind of shot, then this unit will allow that but it's also very important that you know where exactly you place the unit. Because if you want to do a repeatable shot, then you got to place it in the exact same spot. And using this unit not only allows you to do the repeatable routes, but you're also going to unlock Waypoints Pro and also 3D Dolly. Let's boot this thing up, shall we? There we go. Wow. Now we're just going to go in and connect the RTK. Let's see, there we go. Finding, connected. There we go. Nice. All right. Let's see if we can take off. Waypoint create. Let's see how to add waypoint. Oof. <sighs> Returning start point. Up, 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 up. Oh, 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 oh. Oosh. Talk about good thing having that omnidirectional system. Otherwise I would have like, ha, smacked down in the tree. <laughs> if I fly this now, it's going the exact same route. As 
I was flying. That is so cool. So now we can just trust the drone doing its thing and I can record this cool pickup, get a nice pan of that. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. And I'm just trusting it following the waypoint that I set out. And I can also go back without having to worry, right? Oi. See that? Yo. And there we go. Wow. I'm impressed. At first I thought you had to remove the gimbal every time that you turn it off, but it actually has the same kind of feature as a regular DJI drone. Just press once, hold it down. It turns off in this mode, which means that you can hot swap the batteries just by pressing this. Bam! Whoop! And then you have two batteries ready to go. Quick note, I didn't know this when I was out flying. You don't even need to power off the drone when you're switching batteries. So you can actually switch the batteries once the drone is up and running. That is sick. Okay, back to the forest. Something that I really like is that you can still use the SSD from the Ronin 40 and check how smooth it just goes in there. Oh. I don't know about you, but that 3D dolly feature was sick. Being able to go back and forth with the drone at your own pace and then control the gimbal and not having to worry about the actual flight. Mm. That is definitely a way to get shots that you can't get with any other drone that I've tried. When you've set up your waypoints, you basically have two different options that you can choose from. You have the 3D dolly, which means that your drone is gonna fly the same track back and forth, and it also allows you to either control it at the pace that you want it to fly, or you can just let the drone fly the exact same pace that you were flying. And if you've taken down the drone and then you wanna send it up again and fly the exact same route, then you can just choose the waypoint that you set up and then you can fly again. Take a look at how good drone is when I put on Spotlight Pro to recognize subjects. See that? If I move here, instantly two subjects. It can spot the car and it can also spot me. If I want to tap the car, bam, shoof. And then you track C2, which is this button in the bottom. And now, if we record this, I could sort of like, and I can do a nice crane shot. That is sick. And then we can go down. <laughs> so like a jib. Oosh. And then we go up. Oh, that's, that's, that's dusty. We can get a really cool shot if we go down here. That is so cool. I, I don't know about you, but Spotlight Pro? Oof. Definitely feel a little bit more comfortable with flying this drone now. Gotta say, I love the features. Something that I'm personally really looking forward to when it comes to the RTK unit is to be able to use this combined with Inspire and do sort of like a fly around at the property where we're gonna build our house fly a dedicated route and then try to do that every three months. I think that that is gonna be one sick of a time lapse. <laughs> I do feel like being a solo operator of this thing is not something that is entirely impossible because you have so many different things that can help you along the way to capture the shots that you want. Even though I do think that having a co-pilot is probably the best way to go, but I would definitely be able to shoot some client stuff alone with this thing. And uh, you know what? <laughs> I think I might have a plan now for something fun. <laughs> So we have the subject right here, which is my shitty Toyota Yaris, but we're gonna try to make it look epic. And to help me shoot this, I got Adam and 
Daniel. Adam is going to be the second pilot and Daniel is going to be the chauffeur <laughs> of the so-called epic Toyota Yaris. First time really? flying the Inspire 3. Yeah, a little bit scared to be honest. <laughs> How do you feel driving the Toyota Yaris? Yeah, I think the Toyota is going to go... Yeah, it's a NASCAR. Yeah, it's a NASCAR. <laughs> it's a NASCAR, yeah. <laughs> NASCAR going. I'm gonna be the pilot and he's gonna be my co-pilot. If you've ever flown the Inspire 2, you know how bad that FPV camera is. Here you can hardly tell the difference between the real camera and the FPV one. Sick. is quite crazy. He flies like a maniac. I love it. First couple of shots felt good. Now we're gonna fly along the bridge with a 50 millimeter lens. First couple of shots, how did it feel? First, it was a mixture between fear and happiness, and then 100% then... pleasure. <laughs> nice driving, by the way. <laughs> One thing to bear in mind is that Peter flies this Inspire like it's an FPV <laughs> drone. <laughs> it was like three times where we felt like we were crashing, but he was staying there like, no problem, dude. When you start flying FPV drones, flying regular drones becomes boring. So you always try to push the limits of what is possible with a real drone. But having the FPV camera and being able to sort of like join in on the movement is something that I love. We have changed the location now to a little bit more epic scenery of the details that I want to capture. Now, we're gonna do something different because we're not gonna fly the drone. We're actually gonna do this handheld. And I think it's going to work. Just by grabbing the drone, sort of like one hand here and the other here, and then you can control the camera. Never say no to a good hand job. <laughs> Perfect. Currently controlling the gimbal that Adam is running with. <laughs> but it looks good though. <laughs> we got the hero shots, and now we're gonna try to get some interior shots before the sun goes down. What do you think, Goobs? We're gonna call it today. Yeah. 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 I think it was very fun to shoot this commercial together with the Inspire. I haven't even edited this together yet, but looking at the footage just through the controller, it looks great. That was a uh, that was a fun fun commercial commercial the most stupid idea. But first I was thinking like should I should I get a badass Lamborghini to shoot this or just use my crappy Toyota Yaris? And I ended up going for the Yaris. So after using the Inspire 3 now for a couple of weeks and doing the shoot with Yaris, I thought I'd share my final thoughts on this drone because this is a huge step forward when it comes to aerial cinematography. And the first thing that really baffled me with this drone is the sense of security and the reliability 
off it because I've been flying now for a couple of weeks and it makes you feel safe when you're flying it, which is sick, especially considering this drone of this size and what you can do with it. But having the omnidirectional sensors all the way around the body means that you can go into really tight spaces and still feel comfortable with flying the drone. I mean, like I went out to the forest flying in tripod mode along the road. It looked so good and being able to combine that with a subject and then having sort of like 3D dolly if you want to use that. That is one hell of a tool to use when you're making movies. The next thing is the dynamic range of the camera. I know that, for example, my A7S III has a really good dynamic range and if you go up to 12,800 ISO, you have sort of like this dual native gain, I think it's called, something like that. With the Inspire 3, you have a dual native ISO at 800 and then 4,000. When we're shooting the Yaris commercial, we started out shooting at sunset and then it sort of like only got darker from that point on. Even though we switched up the frame rate and doubled the shutter speed, we were still able to pull all the lights from the shadows and bring those shots back to life, even though we shot them a little bit underexposed. I personally thought there would be a lot more noise in the footage when I started fiddling around with it, but since we shot everything in RAW, it looks incredibly good. And the only downside with shooting in RAW, as it is with any sort of camera, is that you gotta do a lot more post-processing in order to make it look good compared to if you were shooting shooting in picture profile or shooting in sort of like another compressed. Something that I really like is having a wide angle lens on a camera like this and being able to use the new 18 millimeter lens definitely gave me a different sort of perspective since most drones are usually at 20 or 24. It's a little bit of a difference, not that much, but being able to combine the 18 millimeter for those big environmental shots and then 50 millimeter for those like parallax and really detailed shots was sick. But shooting in 8K with the 50 millimeter lens also means that we could crop in a whole lot without losing any sort of resolution. And since me and Adam was piloting the drone together, we didn't use the Spotlight Pro or anything like that. But if you were to fly on your own, you would be able to just mark a track and then start tracking the subject that you want to shoot, which is sick. So if you want to learn how to edit the way that I did with that Toyota Yaris commercial, then I'm gonna drop a link to my Final Cut Pro course down below. And I would love to hear your thoughts on the Inspire 3 in the comment section down below. Join in on the discussion. And uh, if this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. Peter Frans Wooden is gonna say goodbye. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.